How's it going folks? Taylor Lukowski here. For today's tip of the day, I'm going to be talking about loose leash walking with your dog. And a question I get a lot when working with clients. Is it bad for your dog to walk in front of you on a walk? The short answer is no. The long answer is no. And here's why. If a dog walks in front of you on a walk, it doesn't mean that they think that they're higher than you. Dogs very rarely have a strict hierarchy when working with humans. With other dogs, that might be something totally different. But very few dogs that I've actually worked with and personally experienced are status seeking. Maybe one of those dogs might be status seeking. Status seeking means that they think that they're higher or lower than any other creature they come across. That they, they constantly try to be higher than, than other dogs, cats, humans, so on and so forth. Dogs as we know it today have been evolved from their wolfy brethren over the last 15,000 years at least. So they don't have that strict hierarchy mindset that we often think that they do. People often confuse dogs for horses. Horses are herd animals. They're instinctive. They're very rarely changed from their you know, cousins from long, long ago. If you're dealing with a herd animal, such as a horse, lots of equines, maybe cattle, you're either higher or you're lower. That's just the way it is. You're constantly pushing to be higher or you're being pushed down to be lower. That's just how they work. For dogs, at least when it comes to humans, a lot of dogs don't care about if they're higher or lower. They've lost that instinctive drive because they've evolved to work along with us and be partners with us. They're our best friend, they are our partner. When I think of Adonis, I think of him as my partner. We are equals. I'm a human, he's a dog, that's it. Of course he's gonna listen to me when I really need him to, but I also listen to him when he really needs me to. I respect him for what he is, which is an animal with a mind of his own. He can walk 10 feet, 20 feet in front of me. I don't care where he is on the leash, so long as he's not pulling me down or acting like a crazy fool. If your dog walks in front of you, don't worry about it. So long as they're not pulling you, they're not barking, they're not causing havoc, they're not chasing cars or tripping you up. You require your dog to consistently stay right next to you in the heel position, even if they're not in heel and you claim they're on a loose leash. To me, that's unnecessary. We are walking the dog for the dog's sake. We are lucky enough to come along, not the other way around. Don't listen to all those people, Caesar, who say that the dogs are just, you know, there to join us. We're out for a walk and the dogs are lucky enough to join us. No, it doesn't work that way. We got the dog. We have to be responsible for them. They are another living creature. They depend on us. If humans were to go extinct, so would the dog. The dog would die out. They evolved because of humans. They evolved from the wolf because humans helped them survive. If we go, they go. If they go, we don't go anywhere. We don't depend on the dog. So if you get an animal, you are responsible for that animal, meaning you need to give them the exercise they need, otherwise don't have one. Humans have this big ego that we're just the greatest thing in the world, the dog should always be right next to us, always paying attention to us, don't ever get out of line, don't ever go sniff this, don't go roll in that, don't say hi to this and that. If you want something that structured, get a robot. Otherwise, don't have an animal. Even humans are not expected to be that strict unless they're in the military, and even then, it's by choice. For people that like their dog to be on their side, you know, there's nothing wrong with teaching your dog heel. In fact, it's a very important lesson to teach them in case you're in a very crowded area or you have a working dog. Even if you don't have a working dog, heel is something good to teach your dog. But that comes after the loose leash walking, which for me, loose leash walking is not right next to me and the leash is just loose. Your leash should be loose no matter what. For your dog to be in heel, in my opinion, 15 minutes tops. Your dog should be in this position no more than 15 minutes. It's very hard work for them to have to stay right next to you, pay attention to every little step you make, every time you stop, every time you turn. They have to look at you. It's very daunting for them. And it's not always necessary if you're just going for an everyday walk. Give your dog the respect they deserve. They're following your command um, and doing what you're asking. So give them what they deserve, a good sniff. Let them go have a sniff break. Let them go walk in front of you, go say hi to the bumblebees and the birds and go have fun with them. Uh, let them go say hi to a doggy friend every now and then. Again, there's nothing wrong with healing, but when people require their dog to be in heel and that's the only position they get to be in, maybe they shouldn't have a dog. For those people that like to say that dogs who get on the couch, dogs that walk in front of you on a walk, and dogs that eat before you think that they're higher than you in the status, you're going to screw up their status, it's total baloney. Okay, dogs don't think that way. Plain and simple. Do your research. Read books. Look up Google. Um, talk to people who are actual behaviorists, not people who just say or claim that they're behaviorists or just because they're a dog trainer. Even the wolves in the wild, not the ones studied in captivity, the real wolves in the wild 
don't necessarily have a very strict higher or lower hierarchy. A pack of wolves is a family unit. The alpha male and female are the parents and below them are the children and then the younger children. If you have a big family of wolves with maybe say three generations, then the adults are the hires because they're the adults, your parents. If you have uh, some middle children that were from the, the second generation, they will help raise the third generation of wolves. And that's just how it goes. They all respect each other. The, the children will be higher and lower than, you know, amongst each other. They will figure that out in their hierarchy, but everybody generally respects the parents, the elders, things like that. But they're not being aggressive to become alpha. They are not aggressively throwing something down and holding it down and forcing it stays right here. Don't you look at this. Don't you sniff that. How dare you break out a heel. All this nonsense because they have a big ego. If they really want something to listen to them, they will give them a warning or they'll tell, give them a lesson. They'll tell them off. They'll growl at them. They'll nip at them. And if that lesson doesn't go well, the wolf who's trying to enforce it might learn a good lesson. Um, oftentimes wolves will have the younger ones go ahead and scout out for prey while the older ones stay in the back. They control the rest of their, their group or they, they come in for a sneak attack or a lot of times they'll use the young ones as a, a way to distract the, the prey so they can come up and sneak around. It's a family unit, they all work together. There's no one animal that eats before the other uh, because they're higher because they can. It's always done out of mutual respect. I think more humans need to learn this when working with their dogs, that you're not necessarily higher because you have opposable thumbs and because you can force your dog with metal tools and shocking and rolling them over and forcing them to submit. Um, that doesn't mean your dog's going to respect you, they're going to fear you. If your dog does happen to trip you a lot, goes back and forth, uh, you know, running around like a crazy fool, then, then just teach them to stay on one side or the other. Um, that's just basic leash manners. That's just a dog who hasn't learned manners. It doesn't mean they need to be forcibly brought into heel position. They're never allowed to leave. Uh, they only have two inches of slack in their leash because people are so tight with it. Um, give your dog some leash. It, it lets them enjoy their walk. They're less likely to have that opposition reflex reactivity from the leash. Um, they, they don't think something's trying to choke them and kill them. Let your dog enjoy their walk. You'll enjoy it too by not trying to constantly force your dog to be here. If you think like a dog, staying in a heel or walking at a human's pace makes absolutely no sense. Dogs walk a lot quicker than humans. If they could, they would probably run everywhere they go. Even if we do jog, we're still quite a bit slower than dogs. So for a dog to have to ignore everything that they like, uh, not stiff the flower, not go chase the, the spicy raisin bee, um, it just doesn't make sense to them. So think like a dog, teach them manners, and also let them be a dog. Their world is of smelling. They can smell so much better than humans, it's not even funny. Listen to your dog and give them a chance to be a dog. We're out here to enjoy nature and maybe they might warn us that there's a cougar coming up from behind us, but they can't do that if they're forced to sit here and stare at us great, wonderful beings because we think that they should. You can't force something to actually believe in you as a good leader, but you can force them to submit. Either way, I'd rather my dog see me as a good leader and not because I force him to roll over or I growl at him or I correct him with a metal pinch collar. I want my dog to understand me and respect me because I understand him and I see him and think like a dog. So if you want your dog to walk in front of you in a walk, that's okay. That's totally fine. If you want to let them do that, go for it. Make sure they have manners and they're not going crazy. And if you want them to walk in a heel, that's fine too. Just be sure to give them a break every now and then. Again, remember, you're not military. And even if you are, your dog doesn't need to be a robot 24-7. Let them be a dog. Let them have a break. So that was today's tip of the day. Thank you so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this video. And until next time, stay positive.